Question 10. Goodness me, question 10. You remember when I showed you that parametrics question yesterday? And it's just like, brr, you know, paragraph of text. You know, this is kind of like, whoa, there's like almost no numbers in this question. It's all algebra and trig. And how do you even approach this? So you approach it by taking the first step. Let's have a look at part A. Show that the roots of this z to the 6 plus z cubed plus 1 equals 0 are also roots of z to the 9 minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so how are we trying to understand this thing? Um, you can see it has to do with roots of unity when you have a look at that bit on the end, right? z to the 9 minus 1. The solutions to this are the ninth roots of unity. You see that? So that's z to, what I'm solving for is z to the 9 equals 1. Okay, so ninth roots of unity are what I'm after. Now, when you look at this guy, you think, well, okay, what can I do with him that connects me to this, right? Okay, now, it's not immediately obvious, right? But that uh, cube, sorry, the ninth roots, that equation that I've got, the polynomial that gives me the ninth roots of unity, is actually a difference of cubes, okay? Not super obvious, but if I write it out in such a way, because nine is a power of, is a multiple of three, I can write this as z cubed cubed take away one cubed. You okay with that? So there's my difference of cubes, okay? Now the reason why I thought maybe I should go towards that is because when I have a look at this guy, right? This isn't just, you remember I showed you a bit of a fancy trick for um, factorizing z to the nine minus one, do you remember that? Or z to the n minus one, we said this. Um, z to the n minus one is gonna be z take away one times, do you remember what comes in next? It's the, um, it's the GP, it's the GP. It went one plus z plus z squared plus da 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 da, all the way up to z to the n minus one. Okay? Now, this is not a bad thought to have, like I need to factorize in some way, but you can see it's not going to give us the answer that we need because um, look how many z terms I have over here. If I were to do this guy, I'd have um, one plus z plus z squared all the way up till z to the eight, okay? And also, not only am I gonna go all the way up to z to the eight, but I'm, I'm gonna have every one of the terms, right? Every power of z will appear. Whereas here, I'm, I'm missing a whole bunch, right? So that's kind of no good, and that's why I, I leap towards, okay, what other factorizations can I use? Difference of cubes, okay? So let's write the factorization for difference of cubes here. Um, out the front, I've got z cubed minus one, okay, there's that term there. And then what do I have over here on the right hand side? Okay, so it's usually, like let me just write this on the side, usually my difference of cubes looks like this. Um, if I did say, um, oops, a cubed take away b cubed, a usual factorization is a same, opposite, opposite a, uh, a, b, always positive, right, you see that? Now, being that the thing that's being cubed at the front is itself z cubed, then the next thing that comes along is z cubed squared. Z cubed squared. You see that? So that's why, in fact, I'm even going to write that z cubed squared so that you can see where my z to the 6 comes from. Okay? My next bit is ab, which is just 1 times z cubed. And then my last guy is... One squared. You okay with that? So there is the piece that I was after, right? So this whole thing is equal to zero because I've just factorized that. I've got z cubed minus one, um, and here is my z to the six z cubed plus one. Happy times. Now, what's the point of that? Okay. Well, when you factorize something, the whole point of factorizing is that if you have zero on the right hand side, then the solutions to each of the factors are solutions of the original thing. Right, so for example, <laughs> when you have a quadratic and you factorize, okay, the whole point is that once you've got these factors, right, if there's a solution for this, that solution will also solve this guy, right? And if you've got a solution for this, it will also be a solution of this guy, okay? So therefore, the solutions of z to the 9 minus 1 are here and here, okay? So everything that solves this will solve your original. And everything that solves this will also solve your original. Okay, so I can say, therefore, um, the root of z to the nine minus one is zero come from or arise from 
these two factors, right? z cubed minus 1 equals 0, and z to the 6 plus z cubed plus 1 equals 0. That's all you need to say. You're finished, okay? I've established that this and its solutions will be solutions to this, which is all they were asking for, right? Show that the roots of this guy are roots of this guy. Happy times, okay? How about we have the next part? This fits an easy part visually. Show those nine roots on an argand diagram. Identify which one of them, which ones of them, are the solutions to this. Okay, so let's just draw a quick argand diagram. What is nine minus two? Okay. Now, because we're talking about roots of unity, and unity is a real number, what do I know about these nine roots? So, so two pi divided by nine. Yes, that's right. They're two pi on nine spaced out around the circumference, and also because of the complex conjugate root theorem. And one's a real number. They're all going to be paired up as conjugates. Okay. So I'm going to start with let's let's draw our unit circle. Uh, it'll do. Okay. My first solution of unity is always unity itself. So I'm going to slap that guy there. Okay. <coughs> now, as I draw the rest of them out, okay, I need to fit. There's my first solution. And I, how many solutions am I going to have in total? Nine. I'll, for the nine roots of unity, I will have nine in total. So I've got another eight to draw on here. Okay. So I know roughly where they're going to fit. Um, two pi on nine, which is the next one up. Two pi on nine. Where's that? It's going to be roughly. Am I going to fit two before here? Three sixty. I don't think so. Yeah. I'm going to go one here and one here. They're going to just fit before pi on two because this will be two pi on nine. Right. This will be four pi on nine. What is, what's right on there in terms of on 9? It'd be 4 and a half pi on 9. Do you see that? That's pi on 2. Okay, so that's why I judge. Like, I'm just trying to give you practical tools for, like, where roughly do I place these. Uh, and then I'm just going to keep going around. So there's my third one, and there's my fourth one. Okay? Or fifth, depending on where you count. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I've done all of the ones for a positive principal argument, and clearly I can't go any further. So now I just do all the conjugate pairs, like so. Okay, roughly, right? Now there are all the ninth roots, okay? And I'm just going to quickly, um, I'll draw the lines up to each one. Is it bad if you're like not that accurate? Um, <laughs> if this were an actual question, like this, was, this appeared in, in an exam, you would need to, like what I would do is I would get my calculator out and I would say, okay, what is, what is 2 pi on 9? And then it's going to be a certain angle. And it doesn't have to be precise, but it has to be enough that, for instance, I mean, the classic problem is we do these roughly okay. And then by the time you get to here, you've, your, your estimates have been so far off that these two clearly do not look evenly spaced along with the rest of them. So I actually don't think it's that bad an idea to actually properly bring in a protractor so that you can, like, roughly, at least within, like, plus or minus, say, five degrees, pop it in the right spot and have your... That would make a nonagon. <laughs> I think it's called a nonagon? Yeah. yeah. That would make your nine-sided regular polygon look at least reasonable, okay? So I, I think we want to do that. Okay, now, I've got all the um, nine roots of unity on there. I want to indicate which of them are solutions to this one, okay? Now, in order to think about that, remember what I just said. The, all of the nine roots of unity are either solutions of this or they're solutions of this, okay? Now, this is just the cube roots of unity. I know them. I know them really well, actually. Which of these three are the cube roots of unity, if I, if I label them out? What's the first cube root of unity? One. The first one is just one. So I'm going to call that omega 1, okay? Because I, I actually don't want these solutions. I want these solutions, so I'm separating out these solutions, right? Where are my other two cube roots of unity? Yeah, they're going, to be, um, they're going to be these two guys, right? That would be 2 pi on 3 to get to here. And this would be minus 2 pi on 3. So I'm going to call this one omega 2. And that makes this one <coughs> omega 3. Not to be confused with the fatty acid. Okay, now, those are the roots I don't want. Those are the cube roots of unity. Okay, So I'm just going to say, you know, these solutions or these roots are the omegas. Okay, so I separate them out. And these guys, I'm going to call them the Z's, the Z1, Z2. They're the ones I'm actually after, okay? So I'm going to say here, the solutions are ZN, okay? So I can simply, and with another color, because I've got them, I'm just going to name which ones they are. There's Z1, there's Z2, there's Z3. And you'll notice, because I've taken um, unity out of, the, um, out of the equation, 
The remaining roots are all complex conjugates, okay? So just to help me, later on this is going to be very, very useful for me, not only am I going to call this Z4, I'm also going to know that it is the conjugate, oh, sorry, that 4 should be down here, it's the conjugate of Z1. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm pairing these up. Uh, down here I've got Z5, which is the conjugate of Z2, and there's my last one over here, Z6, which is the conjugate of Z3. Okay, and just as you expect, because it's a polynomial to the power of six, you've got six solutions. I'm done. Okay.